Binge-worthy pop culture news. Welcome to Up and Adam. Hey, 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 guys. Welcome back and happy Thursday. All right, guys. Well, do we have a treat for you? So Janice Dickinson, we know her as an icon. She's been all over and we've watched her for so many years. She literally is one of the first, if not the first supermodels in the history. She set the tone, the bar. And she's not only coming on and joining us live today, but she's joining us with our great friend, Joey Santos, who has an amazing podcast. So we have a lot to cover. Now, before we jump in, you guys know how this works. If you haven't already, go ahead, smash that like button. If you're not subscribed, get subscribed. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. And with that, let's welcome Janice and Joey. Hi. Hello. Hey, Adam. Adam, it's great I'm to meet so you again. I'm so excited. I feel sure. like... Joey and Janice, I feel like it's been so long. I mean, I Janice, I don't know if you necessarily remember this because it was a few years ago, but I had the opportunity to come to your house party when you were first, you know, getting ready to get married. I met you at Joey's house. And, and the I first come. time I met you, I was just starstruck. Oh, Isn't that sweet? <laughs> yes. That's so nice of you. <laughs> well, now we're in our stuff to be with you. Yeah, congratulations mm -hmm. on your podcast. Yeah, you're doing so great. I'm so proud of you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. But this isn't about you me. This is about you guys. So I, I can... Two guys from Hollywood. In Hollywood. Hollywood. Two guys in Hollywood. I mean, listen, in, have you had Janice on your podcast yet? We yes. did. She was actually last... Yeah, the first season when it was two guys from Hollywood... And Janice is on the show. We did if, if these walls could talk was the episode. <laughs> okay. Like oh boy, they were shaking. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then now we're coming back uh, as two guys in Hollywood, and she'll be on our our uh, season premiere episode. I two love that. Yeah, sometime next month or in September, I think. Who better to have for your premiere episode? I know. Right? Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, I go back. I go back decades of being in front of the camera. And now I'm in, in front of the camera in a different capacity. And it, it just, this format of talking live, you know, it's really, it's really amazing to me uh, from what I've been through in front of the camera of just still cameras and um, movie cameras and video cameras. So this is a treat. It's a treat for me and it's a real big learning experience. Absolutely, because of course we know that everything you know, especially with YouTube and podcast and you being on major reality TV shows, it's constantly evolving and changing. But, you know, going back to it, just to kind of set the bar for everyone in the live chat. And by the way, guys, over 100 people already. We're less than like a few minutes in. So hi, guys. Um, Hello. Hello, Hello yes. your friends. <laughs> hi, hi, hi. You know, we we got to know you, at least for me in my generation, on America's Next Top Model, but that's not where your career began. I mean, there's the infamous photo of you sitting there with a big cat and like you you just, you've set such a big tone and you coined the phrase supermodel, which was one of the first conversations I ever had with you in person. But now you have some big news because you not only coined the phrase, but you're singing about it. I am. How did you know? I mean, <laughs> I do my research. I am coming up and out with an album called I Coined It, produced uh, by Ricky Stokes with me in the studio. We've got about three songs that are good to go and another four to do for the album. And it's great because we've got all these uh, major cities that we're gonna be playing in just it's to, to start. So I get used to singing in front of people and dancing in front of people. Saga Talk, Minneapolis, San, San Diego, Diego, Palm Los Springs, Angeles. LA. And um, all this is tremendously exciting. Ricky's production is RWS Productions, and that's um, his production company. So you can find out all the good news if you just stay tuned to my Instagram, 
Janice Dickinson. And uh, yeah, it's kind it's it, all the news about the, the, the album and the music will be out soon. Yeah, we're doing, we're, we're te it's called the Tease Tour. So we're going to do small, smaller cities to start with. And then we'll hit the bigger cities as we grow. Because, you know, like we said, Janice hasn't been in this format for a long time. Oh, I have too been in the format in gay clubs forever. <laughs> Not on stage. <laughs> well, sometimes I crawled on stage. They just threw me off. Yeah. So uh, we're going to go in a little bit under the radar, but it's going to be super fun and she's going to perform it. And we have a lot of surprises and surprise guests to join it. We're going to do Think San Diego. We're going to do Palm Springs. We're going to do Los We're going to do West Hollywood later, but we're going into the Midwest. We're doing um, Saugatuck. We're doing Grand Rapids. We're going to do Minneapolis. We're going to do Florida. We're going to do Miami later. White parties. But we're going to do Palm Springs. Yeah. So we're, it's going to be a lot of fun and we'll, she'll do the song and even a few venues will be her hosting a fashion show and introducing her song to that. So Yeah, that's going to be a riot. Do I get an invite? Of course. Of course. Of course. Oh, okay. We might even do something in Palm Beach. Be close yes. to you. We could do that. He could set that up at a, at a major club. Yeah. I mean, and listen, we, let's just take over the Breakers Hotel. Why not? Well, why oh, not? I love that. Yeah. Think, think yes. fashion show around the pool. We're going to do fashion shows with absolutely beautiful girls, and we're going to do them with absolutely gorgeous guys. And the guys, yes. In all due respect to the JDMA, the Janice Dickinson Modeling Agency, they will be dropping trout. They'll be taking their pants off right and left. <laughs> oh, you, well, you can't miss it. You better believe. <laughs> I do My have to ask song. you, Janice, with this, and you, you know, you said you're coming out with an album, so there's multiple songs, you know, and this is this is for anyone who's watching. I didn't go over questions with Joey and Janice before this conversation. So if I hit you with something you're not comfortable with. I totally apologize and we can just pass over those questions. But, you know, sometimes when people come out with an album, they have inspiration behind it. And there's, you know, there's something they're singing about. There's a message. And I'm just wondering for you, what prompted you to do this album and what is your message? Like, what are the songs primarily about? Well, I coined it as a feel good song that if I could coin the, the word supermodel, that's where, that's where it stems from, because I coined the term supermodel back in the 80s. Uh, and if I could do it, you could do it, Adam. Anyone can do it. See, anyone could take a phrase and coin it or take a style of, uh, of wardrobe that you're wearing and coin that. You can coin, you know, license plates. You can coin T-shirts. There are just plenty of things, you know, you can do for yourself because use me as an example. I've, I did it. And if I can do it, believe me, anybody can do it. Well, it's more See, of a some nation of a uh, of a career, you know. I mean, a really brilliant career that has been reinvented every few years, you know, and to the max. And so, it's kind of time, and, and it's at a time when her career ran through uh, the disco era, Studio Fifty Four, oh God, yeah, all the clubs, all the excitement and fun of jet setting and travel in Paris and Rome and London and all these great wild times that we had. So this song is kind of representing all of that. And with the hope of kind of bringing a little bit of that energy and that excitement back into the clubs, into our daily lives and into our spirit. Yes. So that's kind of where it is. And bringing back a little bit of that gay club, it's which kind of got music. lost. It's a Total dance. You music. get out there and you shake it. You got to drop trow and shake it to my music. Get on board the J train. Yeah. So the inspiration is all of that. And a lot of her, um, you know, came, a lot of her inspiration came from gay clubs. So many of her following is gay. So many of her friends are gay. And that energy um, will never die. But it, it kind of got lost because gay clubs aren't, aren't really anymore. Like, so I'd we get wanted to bring that energy back to going out and having fun. I'd get kicked out the front door and just re-enter through the back door. <laughs> or the window. Nothing, nothing or the window. In it, or the window. <laughs> that, those were big treats. Yeah. Tearing my hose on the window. You I know, mean, it, 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 sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Right. No, go ahead. Um, I would, no, I was going to say, you know, in your short life that you, you've already had like 10 lifetimes compared to everyone else. And like, you know, you and Joey were saying you know, traveling the world and standing next to some of the most, you know, like the biggest names, the biggest celebrities and, and kind All of, of them. it's, it's wild. It really is it's wild. Like, with them. Stop. <laughs> it's such a small world. 
Quiet, Joey. <laughs> You're an icon. I, I, I'm it's, happily it's, married, but we don't have to talk about well, my You weren't always happily married. I mean, since I mean, since, since you've been, we, we weren't born happily married. We were both single at one We time. had to work towards it. <laughs> right. Well, and last time I met you, I believe it, it was right before you got married. And Joey, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but you came to Joey's house and I was there with my fiance and a few of our friends. And I remember when you walked up, it was with, it was with your husband, who's who's wow. now your husband, but I don't believe he was your husband. Yes, and now you've been married for, is it eight Going years? Eight. It's about eight, about yeah. almost nine. Yeah. See, and Where we met. I going? met Andrew the same time she met Rocky. Yeah. I'm, I'll be with. I'll be married with Andrew for eight years, and she's going. I'm kind of eight I'm years kind too. Of, so we I'm kind of went ten years ish. Like this, because I lived with him first, so I'm ten years ish. So Janice, is this the is this the last marriage? Is this the one that's like this is our forever? Oh God, yeah. You You're know, like, I've finally fallen in love with a human being that I care and respect. You know, it's all about you know loving what he does. He's going fishing next week in Montana. He fly fishes. Well, Joey and I will be maybe traipsing over to Hawaii to work on our tans. Yes, we do. Oh. We need. We are <laughs> just three days. Maybe we should. Can I just? Time. I know oh. Jason's watching this. My fiance, for anyone who's watching it, hey, who Jason. Doesn't know who's Jason, we love you. I just want to we say for Jason, you. please go fly fishing so I can go to Hawaii. <laughs> because that sounds, <laughs> Jason, that's go awesome. with Rocky fly go, fishing. And, and Adam will come with us to Hawaii. Yes, I'll go work on my tan. And, you know, Janice, one of the questions that I have for you, with you know, because we spoke about you now going on podcast, and this is a different way of taping as opposed to you having – a whole production crew in front of your face and taping shows like your own reality show. And of course, America's next top model, stuff like that. And it evolved. And obviously with that, a lot of things have evolved, like the modeling industry and you're a pro, a, an expert, a go-to when it comes to the modeling industry. What are your thoughts now about how everything's changed? Because now it's not just like like it was back in the day where it has to be like a super slender girl who looks like she hasn't eaten that much and she's, you know, 90 pounds. Now it's just like body positivity. Everybody's beautiful. What are your thoughts on how that has evolved? It's evolved in, in very many ways from, from bringing the youth. It's gone backwards in the, in the youth. It's no longer 19 years old. Uh, you know, it's like the 15s and the 16 year olds are starting out like Kai Gerber did and, you know, the Gigi Hadid and her sister, Bella, they started out when they were in their teens. I think primarily the modeling agencies are looking for girls in their teens. So you can grow with them and you can gr they grow into their faces. You grow into their faces with them, you know, watching all the makeup tutorials and and all of the fashion shows laid out by several designers and watching them learn how to walk on the runway and learn how to actually be fabulous in front of the camera. You know, and you have all shapes. It used to be just for very thin women. Now it's for all shapes and sizes, and we welcome that. I've said some really stupid things in the past about about plus sizes, which I apologize still to this day. But it's about all all sizes being embellished and loving your own body shape and getting out there because the designers are, are fitting clothes now for plus size women and, and they're fabulous. I saw them all in Saint Tropez, where I just was on holiday. <laughs> that. That was fun. And there are some stores that pertain just to plus sizes. And I was like very happy to see that. And all shades too, which we've, you know, and you're, you're responsible for a lot of that. And when you first start, when Janice first started, it was girls like Christy Brinkley and Cheryl Teagues. It was the blonde all American look. And because she had an exotic look, she came in and that opened the door for so many more than Iman. Iman and you were together at the same time. And, and Gia. And Gia. And so it became a different look, a darker look and fuller look. More exotic. More exotic. And so, right. and also something else which is really cool that's happening is that um, older models, you know, have a, are, are starting to uh, show their faces. So the, that, that whole ageism thing is beginning to to change a little bit and women in their 50s even 60s i mean elon musk's mother you know oh, she's, she's in her 70s and she and she's working she's at, working for maybelline yeah. yeah so i mean there's great i mean before we had lauren hutton that was that was still carrying it she's through. still hanging in there and she's still hanging in there but now we have even more beautiful women and showing that age that beauty doesn't have an age 
Beauty doesn't have it. And, you know, I think that's so important for you to say to and even Janice, like I'm seeing the live chat where people are saying, you know, thank you for acknowledging that, because I think it is so important to know now we we're like, again, as things evolve, everyone deserves a chance at a platform and, you know, yes. the limelight. And, you know, if we could all kind of bottle just 2% of the success that you had, in the industry, I think it. I think it would be amazing. And you see people like Ashley Graham now, and you you see people all over the spectrum who are just absolutely killing it. But again, we coined the phrase, and when I say we, I mean you, at supermodel. So I don't want to take that away. <laughs> you won't. No. <laughs> so now moving forward, we know that you're working on an album, and I want to get to the podcast here in a minute. Um, Janice, you have been known in the past for being completely unfiltered. And from what I'm gathering now in this conversation, you have moments where you are kind of like, you know, I said some things that I didn't necessarily, like I take them back and I apologize for. Have you ever thought about starting your own podcast? Because you, you are sort of a wild card in the most respectful way possible of saying that you say what you want and what you mean. And normally it's just like it's people are entertained by it. Honestly, I think I'm a better guest than a host. Okay. You know, I've, ho I've hosted television shows where I was the judge and I appreciate just going to someone else's podcast like yours and Joey's and just sitting down, suiting up, showing up and just being fabulous instead of having a daily grind of it every single day. Like you guys are really good at it. You know, I suppose I could... Mm -hmm twist my brain and become good at it. But I don't feel like being good at it right now because I love my life and I love the ability to uh, pick and choose what hour of the day I want to go out and do things for myself or my family or my friends. And you're like, I was just in San Jose. I don't want to produce something. Luke, you can if you want. <laughs> I was in or she can go host with you. Yes. Yes, we will, well, we'll definitely have to have you both back in the future. But now in the meantime, too, because we do have a lot going on, we're about to go on a tour and we have a music album coming out. I want to kind of dive a little bit deeper here, only because I've met you, Janice, a few times and I've always had just like the best interactions with you. I thought you were absolutely hilarious. You were always so sweet to me. And you are, you're a presence. I have to I have to say that and you know that already your presence and it can be kind of intimidating being in the presence of Janice Dickinson but I was so shocked that you put everyone at ease you came like you sat at the table with everyone and you're like listen you're beautiful you're beautiful and you're like let's just have a good ass time and do whatever it like it just shocked me I wasn't expecting that Thank you. So, yes of course and I now appreciate you. yeah of course you know and I think that people need to know that because what happens is we sometimes put things on the internet or we put things, you know, we say, say things in front of the cameras that live on television forever and they become memes and like edits and it's like the most outrageous takes or whatever. And they live with us forever, but really that's not what defines who you are because every single day, every single year, you're changing, you're growing your, you know, your life changes. And I think it's important oh. for people to realize that Janice that we saw who would tell someone like, get off the stage and you're not fit to be a model. That might not be the same Janice that we have well, today in front of us. A television show where I was getting paid to be sarcastic. Right. I was supposed to be the Simon Cowell type figure of being brutally honest. Whereas Tyra Banks was the nice sweet lady who uh, always was enforcing um, everyone's good attributes and I was ripping them apart. So it didn't make me feel good at the end of the day, to be honest with you. And I always said to the girls before I talked to them on camera, I'm going to be saying things that I don't want you to take to heart. I want you to just understand it's only for a TV show that I'm saying it. So if I become too critical, you, you, must, uh, you must not think that I'm doing it to personally attack you. It's just like Gordon Ramsay. Instead of Hell's Kitchen, it was Hell's Runway. Oh. <laughs> and, <laughs> Janice, Joey, are you okay with me opening up um, and taking as we go through this conversation? I see that a lot of people in the live chat are also asking questions. Are, are you okay with well, me I bringing can answer up? questions? Okay. I wanted to bring this one up from Joe Mendoza that said, what was it like filming the Barbie Rehab TV series? I just recently wrapped that with a bunch of great people, Tom Sizemore and uh, Byling. She was on that program and it was about it, 
uh, the concept was about, you know, getting rid of your Barbie addictions. And so several people had to go into the Barbie rehab because they were addicted to their dolls. And I played a do I played Dr. Dr. Janice wearing a white coat and reenacting the bar, the, uh, Sharon Stone scene where she uh, <laughs> um, spreads her legs and then spreads her legs. You know, there's like a big wig in between my legs looking kind of gross and hairy. <laughs> and it was just, it was a comedy spoof on, on just a reality show, this wild and zany. And it was truly fun to do. That was my experience. It was a lot of fun. And I have to give credit to Tom Sizemore, the Academy Award winner, the Oscar Award winner who was doing scenes with me and he made me feel totally at home and natural doing it. Okay. I like that. And I, I hopefully Joe Mendoza, that answers your question. And I'm sorry for this one. This one might not be your favorite question, but maybe you do. Okay. Miss Houdini one, two, three said, did you know Epstein? Why would I know Epstein fool? <laughs> <laughs> There's the Janice what? we know. Where There's the Janice we know and love. Screwing pedophile, you know, being a pedophile. No. no. Yeah, we'll leave Epstein out of this one. And Storm Doris, who actually is a very talented um, designer, asked, question, favorite memory of working with Gianni Versace? Gianni Versace was one of the kindest, most generous, divine, elegant, simple, but seriously professional men I've ever met in my life. And he took me under his wing um, at a very early age when I was in the industry and only booked me for his shows and uh, made me feel special and taught me how to grow into my feet, if you want to know the truth. Taught me how to be fabulous walking. Taught me how to be fabulous speaking um, mock Italian when I was living in Milan. Uh, <laughs> ex existing in a, in, in a Milanese fashion, you know, type. Working with male models. He, he was just taught me how to eat. I went on, uh, I went on tour with him to Tokyo, Japan for the opening of a department store. Uh, as Johnny Versace's date, if you want. And I have very fond memories of Johnny. He was a very special friend, kind, wonderful, and smooth. And he put everyone at ease. You, you gave me compliments before about making people feel at ease. Johnny Versace taught me how everything I know. I love that. And then our next one is from Lori, Lori Hartman. Question, thoughts on Dr. Drew? Oh, Dr. Drew Pinsky. Well, I went on the show Celebrity Rehab uh, because uh, I did have an addiction to Ambien pills. And I told that to Dr. Drew once at a, at a, at a soiree in Hollywood. He said, I can help you with that. So the next week or two, I was booked to go on Celebrity Rehab. And, um, you know, I, I announced to everyone that I did have this addiction to sleeping pills. And it's a rough addiction to kick because I was taking them every night and I, you know, I was going to the sleeping pill rather than just turning the, the nightlight off and going to sleep. So I became hooked on them and they, they helped me slowly get off and, and detox off of the sleeping pills. Working with the other uh, stars on the program, a couple of them didn't make it like uh, Jason Davis. He, he, uh, he overdosed on drugs. He never pulled himself out of the drug addiction stage. A lot of people did make it like Jason Waller moved his wife and two, two young children to Tennessee, you know, setting up buying a big mansion in Tennessee and getting out of Los Angeles. If you want the scene, because he, he was on the scene too. So was I, so, so was everybody on that show. Let's see who, who else was on that show that we want to talk about. No one else really. Hey, you're like, those were the important ones. Those are the important yes. ones. Um, Tatiana Granger said, Janice, would you ever be a housewife on the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills or any other franchise? I don't think Andy Cohen would would book me, to be honest, to be a <laughs> housewife. There's something about me that he doesn't like. I don't know. Maybe I'm too powerful for him because if he started to tell me how to act on one of his TV shows, I might tell him, you know, where the sun don't shine, where he could go stuff it. You're like... Piss off, Andy. Can I answer your question? She will not be on any of those. I shows. doubt it. I mean, if he has the balls <laughs> enough to now. hire me, bring it on. Oh my gosh. Um, I would love for uh Janice Dickinson to come into, you know, like rip Lisa Renna a new one. I would live for it. That it would be, be so easy. I would I would shred her in two seconds flat. <laughs> I love it. All right. And this is I think this is important for those of you guys who don't know Minx Minx to ask, you know, Janice, how old were you when you started modeling? This entire journey that you know, made your career. I was about 15 years old and attending modeling school, if you want to know the truth. And they got us booked on 
a fashion uh, uh, a fashion department store called Birdines. Birdines was uh, out of Miami, Florida, yeah, Miami. and I did some ads for Birdines, and I thought I was hot shit doing these ads, you know, at, at such a young age, and I finally made it in the world of modeling. So that kind of kickstarted my 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 first photographs from modeling school. The rest I had to All go right. to Europe. And then much older, I had to knock on every door in New York City to get rejected. And so I had to go to Paris to be really discovered by the French, by French designers and French photographers and, and French people. So this wasn't, Thank you're you. saying like, this wasn't overnight, like you worked your tail off. It was a slow progression and a lot of rejection, a lot of closing the door in my faces. My first modeling job, definitely Miss Tatiana was um, for I think it was a fragrance. It was a fragrance company. I can't remember the name of the fragrance, but I was holding this big bottle, this big bottle of fragrance, half naked. You could see my boob in front, my small boob in front of the fragrance, and my larger boob like on the on the side. It was very distorted. And uh, you think I need my own reality show? Well, yes, they do. They do. do? They're, they're they're saying that, and they're saying also, oh my god, I love how open that Janice is, and you know. I, I know why, like, while we can applaud everything and all of your success, and for those of you who don't know Joey, Joey is a super yes, talented Tom. celebrity chef. Like, he is on it. Both of them are amazing. I do want to kind of touch on the fact that both of you have been through, you know, something that a lot of people can relate to, because not a lot of people, surprise, you, <laughs> surprise to you guys, not a lot of people can, you know, relate to being a huge famous supermodel or a celebrity chef. But what they can relate to is friendship and also going through struggles when it comes to health. And both of you have battled with cancer, if I'm not wrong. I think I believe I'm correct. And, you know, yeah. I, I, I think it kind of shows people, you know, like while you while you might be at a high high, you can go through things that really just kind of maybe sometimes humble someone or just like- Oh, I went through the entire breast cancer scare and, and I would call Joey up and I would talk to him and he would say, this doesn't define you, Janice. And I use that as my motto, having cancer doesn't define me as who I am as Janice. You know, I forgot who I was for a second. I was getting, I was like starting to feel sorry for myself and he snapped me right out of that. That's what best friends do to each other. You know, you I can't, play the pity party around Joey ever because he will just say, snap, who are you talking to? <laughs> well, and that's a party Joey. you you don't want to ever RSVP to. Unfortunately, life RSVPs it for you. You know, we're never prepared for that, for that sort of news or that sort of thing. I'm, I'm going through it now. How is um, it like for you? Um, you know, I, I don't, I don't give in to those things. I do what I'm told. I understand I do the research and I, you know, I've had the surgery um, and now I'll begin treatment uh, to clean up what the surgery didn't complete. But I think what you do is you trust in your spirit. You trust in God, whoever you perceive that to be or whatever you perceive that to be. Um, with me, I'm a very spiritual person. I'm not a religious person, but my spirituality guides me through it. And my sense of humor, my sense of purpose, and my ability to surround myself with people that matter, good friends that I trust, that trust me. You should see the and, dinner parties he throws. And remind me uh, what life is about and that these things do not define us. They will not represent us. We will just, uh, they challenge us. And right. I think that's what life just does. That's what we're here for. And I don't have any fear of it, really. Is there anxiety that went along with it in the beginning? Absolutely. But you have to replace that with the amount of work that it takes and the perseverance and the trust and belief that you will get through it. And that's how I live my life. And thank God I surround myself with the reminders so people can actually put themselves aside for a minute and go, hey, it is about you today. And listen to what it might be or your anxiety or what your struggle or what you're going through rather than say change the subject well i have a head cold well go, go blow your fucking nose oops sorry ah! <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean but the truth is we have to get away from ourselves to get closer to ourselves 
And the way right. to do that is surround ourselves with the best of intention and the best of friends, best of family, and best of purpose. That's well said, that. Joey. Yes. And, you know, it, it is true. And I think that you both, I, that was well said on both sides. And I can see where, about you know, words. I see the yeah. live chat where everyone's like, you know, good words, a strong mind will make for a strong body. And it's your spirit that's helping you. People are seriously applauding this. And one thing that you said too, Janice, was that you were able to lean on Joey and vice versa. I think that it's important because while we might be on our high highs and you know, feeling like we're conquering the world. It just takes one phone call or one visit to have our world feel like it's turned upside down. And snap I do, out of it. yeah, snap out of it. And just like, you know, there's so many people who are always rooting for you and love you. And I think that's an important message. And I really Thank appreciate you. both of you being vulnerable enough to share that. And especially in a Thank world you. that is so compromised, we're so afraid of everything, the news and, and government and, and so many things are constantly at us. We have to remember to take a deep breath and through it all, just find some kindness, find a little patience and speak a little softer. Yeah, I need to do that more. You know, I, our well, tone has a lot to do with, with how we hear ourselves. I need to do that more. You know, and it it's, doesn't take much to be gentler. And, and the rewards are so great because that's what we go to sleep with is the silence. And if we can wake up in the silence, we'll hear everything we need to hear because you have to turn the volume up in celebration. When we have work to do, you got to turn it down because that's where God speaks, in the silence, not in the noise. The noise is for us to rejoice. The silence for us to learn and apply. See, I'm going to tell Jason's noisy ass to get his own room so I can wake up in the silence. That's what I'm going to do. But no, well, you know, Rocky too, he snores. <laughs> and, you know, for you, Janice, too, this is probably a you know a question you didn't necessarily see coming but over the time of the pandemic we went through a time where we had you know the black lives matter movement and we had a lot, like everyone was at home things were happening and cancel culture really started you know people were being seen for things that they were saying that were problematic and people were being taken off the screen left and right and i want to ask you personally is it is it the fear of saying something that could potentially have everyone say, you know what, we never want to see Janice Dickinson in our presence again? Or is it just watching how the world is evolving and evolving with it for you? I have no fear of going on anyone's podcast at any time. I have no fear of speaking in front of the camera because I don't bullshit. I always speak what, what comes to me and what, what, what is true. And I know that for everyone out there listening and watching, there, they will understand that I am the true, the true bearer of this news. I don't. I. It's worked for me for uh, several decades in the modeling industry, being forthright and honest, and uh, it's it still it still exists. I mean, I I couldn't be friends with Joey uh, for the last fifteen years. Twenty five. Twenty five. Oh my God, it grows. The last twenty five <laughs> years. We, it grows. We, it's a grower, not a show. We met at Iman's <laughs> book a book signing party. That's where we met. Yeah. James. Iman James. and I were good friends, and she introduced us. And the first thing Janet says, "Are you gay?" And I said, <laughs> "Yeah." Oh, good. You want to go out later to the Abbey? I said, "Yeah, let's go." I know. And we've been at it ever since. And yes. this was twenty five years ago. And we went there for several years. <laughs> I, they never kicked us out. Janice, I don't know if you remember this conversation and this is just like a little bit of a sidebar, but we were talking about at your house when you just moved in. I think you and Rocky just got a new house and you moved in and we were talking about the koi pond that you had at the previous house. Oh my God. Oh yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah, we're talking about a koi off. pond and we were joking about going back and we were like, maybe in the middle of the night and you're like, feeling the fish and bring them back to my house. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, we can go fish for them or just like go get some nets and go get your old koi fish and bring them to your new, house. To your new house. And make, you know, turn the jacuzzi into a koi pond. Yes. <laughs> and the the inevitably, I did. They all practically died on me. But oh, but I do remember that conversation and it was silly and fun and, and uplifting. You turn the koi pond into booyah base if you put them in the oh. jacuzzi. <laughs> And Kara said, I love Janice on UK Big Brother. And I know that I've seen it a couple times. Um, Rob J in the city too. I want to give this up. Um, Janice has always walked the walk that she's talked, which is, I, I, that's honestly, I feel like you're a straight shooter. You, you just tell us what's on your mind. And like you said, I'm not afraid to say 
what I'm feeling or what I'm thinking. I'm not afraid of you or the cameras or anybody trying to, I'm just going to give you Janice. I'm not altering it for you guys. I'm telling you how I feel and what I think. Like everyone's always asked me, are you nervous to get, to go on, uh, on this TV show or that TV show? Are you nervous to speak in front of a, like a live crowd? And I always say no. And then I think to myself, should I be nervous? I mean, what, what would I be nervous about? I never really do get nervous, do I? No. I don't think I do. Unless you have to memorize something. Oh, I can't memorize shit. <laughs> and, you know, someone asked in the live chat too, and, and I'm sorry if I, I didn't catch the name. It was up at the top of the live chat. But they asked, would you ever do your own reality TV show again? I would do my own reality show. It takes a brave producer and a brave uh, network to put me on their their network. And I think I would I'd make a killing this time because I've grown into something that I'm not anymore. Like uh, you know, just loosely speaking stupid things about people. That I have I have a more a kinder outlook and a more sincere and honest outlook than I ever have in my entire life, which which is. Uh, easy to do but right. honest but in your honesty you, you can't confuse honesty with saying what's what's really up so people want you to be honest but then once you're honest they feel you shouldn't have said that well then where's the honesty what shouldn't i have right. said and you're just do you know what i mean it's kind of doesn't make any sense so you either have to take somebody at that face value and then also give them a chance to explain what they said you know they just take the sentence and run with it and then you're the bad guy the villain Break it apart. Listen to it. You right. Know, relate to it and answer it. Yeah, I'd love to do another reality show. That would be fun. If you could go back and take back, you know, being on America's Next Top Model, since, you know, we know in a lot of, especially for my platform too, we talk about a lot of Bravo and Housewives and Joey knows, like uh, my fiance and I, we worked for Lisa Vanderpump for a long time. So we've been around the Bravo stuff for a long time seeing like the behind the scenes and production and editors and how producers really push you to be a character that will help with ratings. And it sounds like that's exactly what happened for America's Next Top Model because they wanted you to be like what you said, the Simon Cow, and have these like big opinions. If you could take anything back throughout your career, would there be something that stands out that you would be like, you know what, if I could go back and say like, piss off, I'm not doing that. I'm not giving you that version of me. Would you or no? You, I think you so on you. several occasions when I was in so, very insulting to the models, you know, when one girl, she won the, she won the show and I told her to take the money and go get her nose fixed. That was a rude thing to say. That was like really mean and crude. And I apologize for saying that to whichever winner I said that to. Eva, Eva that, Marcel. Yeah, that was really rude. Oh my gosh, it was Eva? I wish I could take that back. Well, I'm taking it back now, Eva. So I'm sorry I said that. I didn't have to say that. That was like 100% mean. Yeah. Was that on camera? Yeah. Yep. Oh, oh. Shirley Palomino wants to know, is Tyra Banks annoying? Uh, I think everyone can be annoying at times, but she was, she was certainly annoying uh, sitting next to me. <laughs> and I was annoying to her. It was, you know, when you work with someone in close, in close proximity, it's it's inevitable that one's going to become annoying. So yes, she was annoying, but so was I. And if you had to, you know, because we know that you had guest judges and I don't want to spend too much time on America's Next Top Model, but, you know, we know that you had guest judges, but from the show itself, it was really primarily you, Tyra, um, Jay, Manuel, and also Miss Jay, right? Right. So if so, like, who did you favor the most who was your favorite to work with out of that group of people what's the name of that photographer that was a judge oh, oh I my god I, I love that you're asking me nigel nigel, nigel was nigel. great nigel was very uh open and not, not so much critical he was a very sweet guy and uh you didn't hit it with miss jay I didn't, I didn't really hit it with Miss J. Miss J used to look down on me because I think he was very close to Tyra. Mm -hmm. He was just always looking down on me and saying kind of like slightly bent negative things, which went in one ear of mine and out the other, because you can say anything you want to me, you know, and I'll, I'll, I'll look at you with a blind stare and then just uh, move on thinking, you know, you just stuck your tongue in your, on your, foot, <laughs> your foot around your heel in your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, everyone's going through the live chat and they're like, Nigel, Nigel, we love Nigel. All right. Um, Nigel was great. 
Shirley also asked, um, I, I'm going to skip this question because it doesn't, I don't think it's Thank necessary, you. but Storm Dora said, how was it working with Kimora Lee Simmons? Oh, Kimora was great. She used to tell me to take my spider legs off the table when I was sitting there. She was, she was very uh, upfront and honest and crude at times towards me. But then again, they all are when they're jealous, don't they? Can, can oh. I reveal one story about that? Yes. <laughs> she did irritate Janice quite quite a bit. And so <clears throat> Janice had a little plan to get back at her. So she sent one of the assistants out to buy a big jar of kimchi, which is very foul smelling. And so during yeah, the sticks. breaks, they opened the lid and she stuck it under Kimora's chair. So with the hot lights, <laughs> <laughs> the just smell of saying, the oh my god you stink permeating you <laughs> permeating odor the coming out of your seat good lord <laughs> you need to take a shower before you work as a judge here please I'm, Everybody I'm she, she got up and, and ran off the set and that i was, was like hilarious. i took the kimchi and like locked <laughs> it, it up is. so no one could ever find it again <laughs> yeah you know that was me i did it I, <laughs> I love that story. <laughs> also, with you, with you, of course, being a judge on you know the show and you know your career in modeling, you know this this might be off topic, but I am curious what your thoughts are. I want to pick your brain on this. We have like the Kardashians, who has a Kendall Jenner, who grew up in the spotlight, and then all of a sudden she's one of the highest paid supermodels coming from a reality TV show. And then Gigi Hadid, she was on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, and her mom was a a model and kind of like help push her in that direction. Do you think that some of these girls would have made, made it in the industry the same way that they did without having a family, famous family backing them? Nepotism. That's a great question. And I don't think they would have made it to the, to the extent that television does to a person. I mean, you guys see what happens on your podcast. You've reached new audiences that you never thought you could dream of reaching. Think about doing a reality show or a scripted show and, and, and see and see the, the following becomes up into the millions. And it's what Anna Wintour of American Vogue, the editor in chief is looking for is uh, fans like the bloggers. They, they, they feature, they, they feature, they feature the bloggers to, to get their followers to buy the magazines like, like Bella Hadid or Kendall Jenner. And she can also go on, um, she she went on Keeping Up with the Kardashians talking about her daily life as a supermodel. So it, it, one glove fit the other glove and it kind of went hand in hand with where she was. And they talked about of her growing up on TV. And so I think they, I think they covered all those topics, but I, I definitely think that they helped both of these ladies' careers. Right. Well, and that makes sense too, because you have a following. So if someone backs you or if there's a designer who wants you to wear their clothes, they know that you have a hundred plus million, you know, followers, oh, yeah. you post a photo and then all of a sudden that designer, you know, is more desirable. Um, this is yeah. a great question. Jason Carr wants to know, I saw you on the Andy Warhol documentary series on Netflix. How was it modeling with Andy? Andy Warhol was, was a <laughs> genius, very quiet. He did several shoots with me. Uh, for for Italian Bazaar and, and, and French Bazaar, shot by uh, the legendary photographer Art Kane. And he was very quiet when he came into the studio. And my job was to wear like lingerie from the bottom up, nude on the top and tied in back of my, in back of the chair, I was tied up as a, as a, as a victim waiting to get raped or something. And Andy Warhol was supposed to be the rapist. He had, a, he took off a mask and he sat down next to me and he was going, ah, you know, and <laughs> I was like, ah, it's Andy Warhol. I want, I want one of your soup cans. You know, <laughs> he, he was sweet and nice and, and never showing off that he was Andy Warhol. He was like a, a appeared to be a meek, mild guy from where, what was he from? Kansas? Yeah. Somewhere. Or Midwest. He was from somewhere in the Midwest. And it it was it was wonderful mod knowing Mr. Warhol and mo modeling for him and getting a sense of being with him in the photograph. So that was a that was a big feather in my in, in my in my nest. 
uh, working with Warhol. Okay. All right. I and thank you for the honesty. And I, I see where people are, you know, like going wild about it. I want to ask both of you to, as we sort of kind of, because I know that both of you are very busy and I don't want to keep all of your time, but you Why know, not? you both, you've, you've been around so many huge names, so many big celebrities that we all watch on TV. We see them in our magazines and it's like, wow, what would that person be like? I don't mean to put you on the spot. You don't have to answer this if you don't want to, but I would love to know from both of you who your favorite celebrity, because you're a celebrity, right? Who your favorite celebrity of all time has been that you've built a friendship with, that you've connected to, or even maybe a, an interaction and your least favorite. You first. Favorite of all time is Elizabeth Taylor. Oh, wow. Come on. I okay. mean, you can't better than that. Oh. She had the most contagious laugh. She was funny. She was kind. She was very generous. And um, I mean, that was the pinnacle. All the work she did the, for AIDS. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, forget it. But I was very lucky to have been with her quite a few times at her house and out to dinner with her. I mean, it was like, like nothing you've ever imagined to be in that presence. And everything around it was just magical. Um, my least favorite... Uh, I mean, personally, I, I choose my company wisely, you know, I don't really hang around with my least favorite anything, but professionally, uh, you are sometimes forced to work with people or work for people that weren't the most gracious Come on, spill. or kind. I will say this, the bigger they are, the star the wealthier they are, the person, the most generous and the most kindness. The ones that have not been were horrible. And I'll just leave it at that. Okay. All right. And we know that Janice is not going to give us a roundabout least favorite. So <laughs> <laughs> no, we appreciate that. But you got what out of it. You danced around it. Excuse me? Oh, I was saying, no, Joey danced around the, the least favorite, but that was a great answer. My and for least you favorite was Mick Jagger. I got to be honest, because I dated him for several months and he dumped me on over the telephone telling me that I was too crazy to be with. And I was like, <laughs> what do you mean you were over last night? You know, what? So he must have been saying this. He definitely was in front of his girlfriend, Jerry Hall, Jerry who was Hall. cheating on her with, with, She's me, getting divorced. with me again. Well, well, good for her. Maybe she'll get a lot of money this time. You think? But, you know, so it was Mick Jagger. And I have to say my favorite celebrity was Sylvester Stallone because I was in a relationship with him and he was kind and he taught me things like how to play golf and, uh, you know, just to be just to be more humble as a human being. Because I was really I really had my nose in the clouds back <laughs> then. You know, I was really walking around thinking that I was the, the cat's meow and he's he, he knocked me down a few notches and I'll always respect that about you, Sly. So thank you for, thank you for those days. And you had fun with him. I had a blast. Can we yeah. just, just because I'm fascinated in this and with all due respect to your current marriage, because this is the one, the one that is here for the long haul. You're naming like some very famous people that you've dated. And I'm fascinated because you just like nonchalantly said, you know, Mick Jagger was kind of a douche and called me the night after and then Stallone, like, <laughs> Good. Who like? Can we just hear some more of these famous names? Like you've dated some really famous oh, people. You want me to go through the whole uh, like Screen Actors Guild list? We need an Is accounting it, firm. Why do I need Is, an accounting firm to figure it out? <laughs> okay. Who's the most famous person that you've dated? Uh, the Pope. <laughs> <laughs> she kissed more than his ring. Stop it! <laughs> Stop it! Pop it! Please stop it. No. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Um, Isabel Valdez said, please tell Janice I said hi. Um, I do want to bring this up before we end off. This was a good question. Um, Gabrielle said, do you think how the industry, how it's going to, do you think it's going to evolve with social media and now that everybody can be a model? Like, what are your thoughts on that as opposed to before social media? No, no. Not everyone can be a model. You have to be photogenic. To become a ma to become seriously taken seriously uh, in photographs uh, and in front of the camera, you have to be photogenic to an extent. I mean, look at Sharon Stone, camera perfect face. Look at Cindy Crawford, camera perfect face. Look at uh, 
even her daughter, camera perfect face, Kai Gerber. Kai. You know, you have to have a cam. You have to have something, a joie de vivre. You know, to make yourself interesting, so the camera picks that up. You have to be sure of yourself that everything you're saying is the truth, because people out there know if you're bullshitting or not. They can tell. The camera doesn't Whatever lie. comes out of your mouth, they will know. So make sure you tell the truth. So it's the delivery. It's the delivery, okay. the date, the look, and just generally how pleasant you are. And the oh. preparation to any opportunity. And that's very important for anything in front of the camera, whether you're an actor, whether you're a performer, an artist, whatever that is, a model, it really is the preparation to your craft. Like making a meal. Yeah, and you have to know how to pose, you have to know, and it's not easy. I mean, none of it is that simple. They just think the finished product is what you sign up for. It's not. No, 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 you have to learn to walk. You have to learn to pose. You have to learn to be, be fabulous in front of a camera or just use your cell phone if you want to see how that is and do playbacks to see if you can actually read a script or don't read a script and just be yourself and talk about, talk about your childhood. Uh, you know, and it's all, and also most important to be pleasant around everyone, you know, and everyone you meet. And watch your feet when you pose for Christ's sakes, these pigeon toes ah. are the world and girls do it all no. the time. I'm killing. I'm, I'm not kidding. Be nice. No, they pose like that. I mean, so many. Maybe people, they can't help it. No, but it, you just learn. I do have to say really quick too, and this isn't about me, but you know, when I first moved to LA, I signed with Wilhelmina, and I was like, "Oh, this is going to be so easy." You take some photos, and they put me in test shoots. It made me. So, it was so uncomfortable that I was just like, "Can I go bring the other models water or something? Like, do you want to hire me as an assistant because I can't do this?" And people think it's just like me being very naive going into it. Like, it's so easy. You take some photos. It's not easy. It it's not, not easy. easy at all. And wait till you meet bookers and, and, and agents. Oh, they're they brutal. Crucify you. Brutal. So we're being gentle. Brutal. New Janice is gentle. Old Janice is like an agent. <laughs> Critical. <laughs> Critical. Okay. All right. And before we sign off, um, and thank you guys, everybody's sending so much love. They're like, we need a part two of this. And maybe we'll get a part two as you're going through your tour, just so we can help celebrate sure. that tour. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We will. As long as you I wear have... some of the merch. Oh, we have yes. great merch coming through. So we want the we'll merch. Your, we'll your way, merch. for sure. Yes. We want your merch. And Janice, when, you're, when your album comes out, where are we going to be able to find it? It's on all platforms. Yeah, it's on all platforms. On I coined it. All platforms. I coined it. Yep. And then for you, Joey, we're on the pod, and you have some things coming out. Where can yep. we find well, you? Well, I'm working on a new uh, podcast in addition to two guys from Hollywood. We changed from – it was two guys from Hollywood on iHeart. Now it's two guys in Hollywood on Spotify. Yeah. And that'll be uh, premiering next month. And then I'm working on a brand new podcast together with um, Philip Smith, a, a Hollywood historian, that is going to be um, Hollywood Our Way. It's going to be all about Hollywood from the beginning to where it's going. And, to, and we're going to talk about the, the, the movers and shakers from the era gone by, so that whatever celebrities and stars are left and directors and people that, you know, hairdressers and every, builds, you know, set builders and everybody from that that part of Hollywood that we've forgotten. So that golden age that we want to keep, we want to shine it back up because it's tarnished quite a bit. And to have the memories and some great, great stories that nobody really knows about Hollywood from its heyday. So it's going to be an interesting podcast. And Philip Smith is a historian, a Hollywood historian. You will have nothing but great information and stories to learn from him. But you too, Joe, your father was a famous actor. He was. My dad did over 100 films and TV shows, and, and he was a director. And So, yeah, so there's a lot of stuff we're going to share with you guys, too, on both, both podcasts. So stay and, tuned. Yes. And I, I do have to – oh, oh, my gosh. People are coming with the best questions. Um, really quick, well, I have say, to say, yeah. Phyllis is us. incredible. And I remember a time my mom was in town visiting. I don't know if you remember this, Joey, but we all went and did karaoke. And Philip had this yes. massive diamond on. And my mom was like, she went to touch it or something. And Philip's like, I forgot what he said. It was something so sassy. I, I just loved it. My mom's like, oh my God, I'm a well, he has a dual jewelry. collection like Elizabeth Real Taylor. Real baby. Yeah. Yes. I, I mean, the thing was like the size of like, no, it was, it was ridiculous. Um, this, 
this was such a great question. Rob J in the city. This is guys. That's our, we're going to let them go. They're busy, but no, we're, the city we're, 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 we're good. We're hanging with you. Oh, okay. If you need a documentary, I would have to say no one. <laughs> there hasn't come a lot. Come, Steven Tyler. <laughs> no, you're funny. Funny. <laughs> Nobody? Rock and roll. I no know. one worthy? I can't think of anyone. If any, I can't think of anyone that comes to mind that would have the joie de vivre that I do. Can you? I can't. Yeah, that's a good question. I'm an original. God, that's a real good question. I'm an original. Yeah, you yeah, really thinking. are. I mean, that's why it's in the song. That's if why it's in the song. If she had a different face, you know who I feel like has the personality is, I forgot, and I, I'm blanking on her name right now, but if you guys have seen Ozarks with um the one who, Ruth, who plays Ruth, do you know who I'm talking oh, about? Yeah, she's oh, like, her, admitting Anna. No. Yeah, oh, yeah, uh, Anna. Yes, yeah, yes. She's also, uh, she's playing Sassafras. Ma she's playing Madonna. Yes. She? If she if if she had it if she had obviously it would have to be like a Janice Dickinson face that she does not have, but she's very beautiful, That's but she doesn't look anything yes. like Janice. I think that she could do it because she has that hoop spot, like the He is a tremendous actress. Yeah, she's well, a great thank actress. You. That's really nice to be compared to her. Julia Gardner, yes. Julia Gardner, right. yes. Thank you, Val. Yes. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, with that, Joey and Janice, this has been an absolute pleasure. Everyone has been so thank happy throughout this live chat. Thank you for we your questions. You. Thank you for the questions, fans. And thank your listeners for us. We really enjoyed we being you with guys. you guys. And oh, we my gosh. You. And thank you just again for the time. And Joey, um, also, we'll be back. Jason and I, for a fun project, nobody knows this. Joey, I talked to you about it a little bit earlier, yes. but I'm we keeping it under wraps. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, we'll be in in guys. August. Jason and I will have to get together. Yeah, I'll let get me know. Together too. Well, well, I'll yeah. host it. I'll have a dinner party. Janice will come, and you guys. I'll host it. Janice, I'm going home. with you to Saint Tropez. I've never been to. I've never been to Saint Tropez. I've never been to Europe, oh, so I just want to. Can I? Will you pack me in your bags? I just have to say that I have. A, I have a show that I'm about to do in South Africa. I'm not allowed to t tell you what the name of the show is, but I am going to South Africa for another month, and uh, it more is to be revealed on this. So. I'm grateful. Just let Are you, you know packing that me I'm in the bags for that? <laughs> yes, but you have to get all your shots. I have all my <laughs> shots. Malaria? You don't have malaria. Oh, I don't have malaria. I don't even know her, but I'll look for Maria, it. My friend. All it's right. Shot. Thanks for having us on your show. We'll, right. talk, we'll talk soon. Bye, guys. Thank Great you so much. It was such a pleasure. Dickinson. I coined it all platforms. And follow yes, me on Instagram, JoJoBoy13. And my Instagram, too. And I will definitely post that in the description of um, our, our video. And guys, don't forget to go check out the album, check out the podcast, and we will What's definitely up? be stealing Joey and Janice in the future for a part two. You guys Thank have been amazing. So in the live chat. Thank you, guys. Keep, you, Adam. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Bye. Janice. Bye. Thank you, Joey. Bye, guys. All right, guys, what an incredible conversation. Joey and Janice were absolutely amazing and so raw, just giving us like the real, the Pope? Where did he come up with the Pope? But I love it. And trust me, it's so much better in person. This was just kind of like a window into, I guess, who Joey and Janice, you know, like the interaction, so much fun. I can't even express it enough. They really should just have, he needs to, I know he has multiple podcasts, like make another podcast with Janice too, because they're a riot. And I think that this could have even been more of like a toned down version. Like, I feel like had they uh, kind of structured out this conversation because I didn't ask them questions ahead of time, it might've been a little bit different and unfiltered. They need an unfiltered podcast. But again, thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. If you haven't already, go ahead, smash that like button, get subscribed, and we will see you so very soon. Bye guys. Love you.